Howdy y'all, welcome to another random parking lot here in Austin, Texas. Today we are gonna be showcasing and going over the UI on the Tesla Cybertruck. I know it's something that I was really curious about whenever I was obsessively watching YouTube videos and trying to find anything out about this car, so let's get right into it. We're gonna start off with this big screen UI that is very well animated and very smooth. What I wonder is, is while I scroll around here, is the refresh rate higher on the display for this car? It, it kind of feels like it. it's, it's really, really smooth. All of these little dots around here are things that you can control. So down here we have ride height. So we'll go ahead and pop into medium. Bam, there we go. That's super quick. We also have the frunk, just press open and you can see it pops up just like that. Same thing. You can also pause it apparently anywhere it is. So we can pause it. Very cool. So now it's kind of stuck and now it's kind of sitting there. Just go ahead and lower that. Back here we have the tonneau cover. We can go ahead and open that there. It's a live view. And once again, you can pause it anywhere. Oh, we have attention. <laughs> There's somebody coming over here. And back here we have the charge port have somebody pulled over next to me. <laughs> and lastly, we have the bed of the truck. I don't want to press it. I don't want to go out there and close it. So I'm just going to leave that as is. But if you press it, it will open. It is not automatic. It is just assisted. The map kind of fades in on the right side up there. I thought that was a really, really cool feature. Oh my God, there's like three people here. Holy crap. As you can see in the top left, we also have the we have the tap to activate drive. This is that feature that uh, newer model S and X have where it'll guess if you wanna go forwards and backwards. If I put my foot on the brake, it'll put me in the drive. You can see that person up there. And then we'll go over that in a second here. We have sentry mode up here, my profile. And then if the car is locked and unlocked, I'm gonna go ahead and lock the car. <laughs> uh, down here, we have your media source and we have our tone. So. I like a little bit more bass on my car, so I have that turned up a little bit with immersive sound. Our balance options, so you can do uh, DJ commentary, explicit content, and allow mobile access, and your sources. This is essentially the same on all of the other Teslas. From there, we can swipe. We can actually see our odometer, current drive, and our energy stats since we've last charged. And then we can also see our tire pressure and we can see our ride height. So right now we have about 10.4 inches of ground clearance and our total height is five foot 11. And that actually does, I have noticed if you do, if you do change your ride height, that adjusts live. So that's really cool. Swipe back to media source. If we want to go to the more traditional Tesla view, all you gotta do is swipe down here and now we have our map. From here, we can press on navigate where we can go home. Fun fact, you can actually swipe down. It'll automatically navigate you either home or work. Down here, we have our map orientation. I like to have mine always orienting wherever the vehicle is looking. Um, you do have your satellite view. You have traffic conditions, waypoints on and off, and you can Look for charging if you click down here. A red pin will always be a Tesla supercharger. Let's move into controls. So controls is down here in the bottom left. You have a lot of options compared to all the other models. From here, you can fold your mirrors. You can adjust your mirrors right here. If I click on that, I'm scrolling and it's adjusting. Restore that. Same thing with steering. If you have any other Tesla, you know that this is how you adjust that. From down here, you have your uh, ride height. So this is where you can actually change to a high, medium, low, and entry ride height. As I've said in the past, you can be in medium and low at whatever speed on road that you want, but in order to be in high, you have to be under 25 miles an hour. It does also remember your location. So that's pretty cool. Tonneau is currently open. We can close that from here as well along with open our tailgate, child lock and window lock here. Then you have your headlights. I leave mine on auto and you have your brightness, which is set on auto as well. Glove box is really cool. You click on that and it opens a drawer to the right. You can see it a little bit and it also retracts. So that's pretty cool. Moving on to dynamics, we have comfort, sport and off-road. We'll start with comfort. Uh, acceleration is chill. Ride and handling is relaxed and the preferred ride height is higher. 
In sport, your acceleration is standard, ride and handling is focused, and preferred ride height is lower. Custom kind of allows you to configure your car however you'd like. So for me personally, I like the acceleration on standard, ride and handling relaxed, and preferred ride height lower. Down here, I also have apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. All that essentially means is whenever your truck's battery is cold or you're close to 100% charge, it will apply the brakes instead of regenerative braking. From there, we have auto shift out of park, which is in beta. So if I press my foot on the brake, like I said, it will guess if I wanna go forwards or backwards. And if I unbuckle my seat, so if I click here and I unbuckle my seatbelt, puts the car into park, which is very convenient. We also have auto lower, which lowers the suspension whenever we are in park for easier entry. From here, we have off-road mode. Shows a big old warning message here. We'll go ahead and click on confirm. From here, we have off-road modes. Use Overland to optimize traction for OHV and rock crawling traits, and use Baja to optimize vehicle controls for more dynamic driving. One thing I noticed once I got into this mode, I hear some fan kicking up up front. You have your handling balance, acceleration mode, stability assist, standard, reduced, and minimum. I keep that in standard, and we have wade mode which raises the right head of the vehicle and it actually pressurizes the battery pack if you're driving through shallow water. So that is pretty damn cool. There's that screen for that. Over land, we can choose what kind of terrain we're on. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Optimize traction by adjusting wheel slip to the terrain, selecting rock raises to full high to very high. So all purpose, sand, gravel, and rock. Stopping mode is hold and roll. Trail assist is a feature which is coming soon. So that's really neat. From there, we have towing and hauling. We have trailer mode. If we click on that, that activates. As you can see down here, it says to engage trailer brake, tilt right scroll wheel to right, cannot adjust following distance. So we have a trailer brake gain, trailer brake boost, uh, and then there's that right scroll wheel to trailer brake. Adaptive regenerative braking, which automatically increases regenerative braking to provide more stopping power. And then from here, you can do the trailer light test. That's we did that whenever we did our tow test. It essentially just flashes all the lights to make sure that they were operating properly. And there we have our charging menu. Uh, one thing I did notice is it does still recommend to charge to 80% for daily driving. Um, we can open our charge port from here. That opens, we can unlock it and close it. And we can schedule at a certain location. That's my last supercharging stop. From there, we have our outlets and mods, which is specific to Cybertruck, which is where we can activate our outlets. We have a 120 volt outlet here underneath the armrest, back here in the rear. We have two 120 volt outlets in the bed along with a 240. So we have power feed for the roof and power feed for the front. I actually don't know what the power feed for the front is. Maybe that's for a winch if you wanted to put that on. Not entirely sure. From here we have enable cabin outlets on entry and you can keep on cabin and bed outlets. It'll essentially just keep your outlets on for about 12 hours. For autopilot, we do not have any autopilot or full self-driving on this vehicle yet, only traffic aware cruise control. So we can check, we can choose our follow distance. We cannot enable full self-driving. It says it will be available in an upcoming software release. And then we have traffic light and stop control. I actually don't know why that's not enabled. I actually like to use that. And there we go. Set speed, offset, speed limit warning, speed limit, forward collision warning, lane departure avoidance, and then all this stuff that you see in all the other Teslas. In locks, we actually do have driver door unlock mode. So similar to the Model X, whenever it detects a key is there, and it'll pop that door open, holding down the interior driver door button will unlock the rest of the vehicle to let you in. For lights, we everything is generally pretty much the same. The only difference is being that you can have bed light brightnesses, which I leave on auto. You can have that at 100%, it gets really bright. And you have your accent lights where you can turn them off, on, and auto, and then you can actually adjust them. I leave mine on purple. For display, you can have the Cybertruck logo pop up whenever you hop into the car. And then you have appearance, you can do light and dark. I personally like mine on dark. For me, it feels like it fits the vehicle a lot more And auto rear view camera off on and auto so for rear view camera whenever you are in drive your rear view camera is right here right now the tonneau is back so it has to show just so you can see outside of the vehicle i actually love this i have mine on all the time even when my tonneau is not covering the bed because the rear window is not big and not very useful in this car everything else is essentially the same for trips exact same as any other tesla Navigation, also the same as any other Tesla. Safety, as far as I'm aware, this is also the same. Service, 
also essentially the same, does have jack mode. Everything is pretty much the same in service and upgrades doesn't work for me for some reason. Just wanted to quickly mention that this is my company's work truck. We do electric vehicle services in the Austin area, primarily focusing on getting your filters replaced and odor removed for Model 3 and Model Y, but we also do provide our Cybertruck for events, commercials, reviews, whatever it may be. If you're interested, our information is down in the link in the description. From there, we can hop into our air conditioning system. So click on here, we have three levels of heating for both the left and the right front seat. Our mirrors are heated. Looks like just one level, so heated and not heated. We have two levels of heating for the yoke. We have bioweapon defense mode, which essentially makes the cabin as clean as humanely possible, only allowing the most fresh air into the cabin. You can adjust your direction of air just like any other Tesla here, and you can schedule preconditioning at certain times. Click on settings. Once again, pretty much the same as any other Tesla. You can also control the rear from here. It looks like we have three different zones. You can also control the rear left and the rear right seat at three different levels of heating. And there are also presets for different cooling locations along with low, medium, and high. You cannot change the temperature for the rear vents. From there, we have toy box. We have the light show. We have my personal favorite, the arrival. We have Boombox. This is behind from the software update, so I can't actually change my lock sounds on here is what I've noticed. Mission testing mode, tracks, romance mode, sketchpad, and Mars. Mars is slightly different, I've noticed. If I hop into Mars mode, you'll notice the entire UI changes on the left side here. It gets all, it gets all orange. And even when I'm in drive, the entire UI is still that kind of orange red hue. From here, we have our rear screen, so we can actually control our rear screen remotely, which is pretty awesome. You can lock it from here if you don't want anyone to mess with it. You can change your audio source from the front and the rear, so if they're watching Netflix, you can change the audio source. You can adjust the front passenger seat and turn your heated seats on and off. Once again, this is mirroring the screen in the back, so this, this is literally just mirroring it. We can also watch Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, and Twitch, no Disney+, Plus. and you can see our media source from back there. Dash cam is the exact same as any other vehicle. We have our energy, also the same. Theater, we have Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Oh, you can't watch TikTok on the rear screen. Interesting. Yeah, you can't watch TikTok on the rear screen. I did not know that. Arcade does not have Steam support. That sucks. I really wanted Steam on this car. I don't know if it's confirmed. I don't know if it's ever gonna happen, but as of this moment, it is not in the car. It also doesn't have zoom like the new Model 3s and Ys do. I think SNX do as well. Also, there's a little Cybertruck in the background of the Sudoku, of the little Sudoku wallpaper. That's interesting. You have your manual. So we have our owner's manual in here. And then we also have the rest of our audio sources like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, all that fun stuff. When you're in drive, you get your left and right blind spot cameras, which I use all the time. I use this more than I actually use the actual physical mirrors on the vehicle. You can also move it from here to here. I personally leave that there. As you can see as other cars go by, you can see them on the screen just as any other Tesla. It also gives you a visualization of what the car sees on the road. You do have, like I said, adaptive cruise control. It is exactly the same as any other Tesla. Lastly, we have our cameras. So we have our front camera, and if we swipe down, our rear camera. There is also a button on the steering wheel up here that I can press. Whenever you're below a certain speed, you can toggle that by just pressing on a button on the steering wheel. So you have your front camera and your rear camera, and you do have a little spray if you are off-roading and get that front camera wet. I wish you could do that on the rear camera. That is a Big miss on Tesla, in my opinion. While we are in our drive modes, or my foot is on the brake, we have the little drive selector up here. We can swipe up to go forward, down to go backwards, and we can tap the middle to put it into park where it puts us in this beautiful UI. This is the full V12 UI. I'm not entirely sure if this version of V12 will come out for other vehicles, similar to how whenever new Model S and X came out with V11, 
3 and Y got it later. I assume the font is going to be specific to this, and I'm not sure if this cool UI will be as well. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and I will do my best to review them. Definitely subscribe for more Cybertruck content. We have some really cool stuff coming up. I have some really fun ideas. So if you want to see more Cybertruck content, stay tuned, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.